Well, to virtually nobody's surprise, ex-CBC radio host Jan Gomeshi was recently found not guilty of a variety of charges ranging from sexual assault to overcoming resistance by choking. And predictably, the usual suspects were outraged, claiming this verdict is yet more evidence that the justice system is broken. Now, for what it's worth, my hunch is that given the number of complaints and the number of alleged victims, Gomeshi probably has gone over the line on occasion when pursuing his penchant for so-called rough sex. And I think this hunch is a gut feeling shared by millions of observers. But the justice system does not and cannot run on hunches or gut feelings. The justice system is fueled by evidence. And quite frankly, the three witnesses for the Crown did such a disservice in their testimony and their collusion that it's actually a minor miracle the Gomeshi case ever made it to trial in the first place. Indeed, does any reasonable person think that Justice William Horkins should have overlooked about a dozen major glaring inconsistencies in the witness's testimony? Was he supposed to overlook what he deemed to be deliberate lies uttered by the very woman on which the case was based? Add to the mix that there were no hospital records, no DNA samples, no photographs. Hey, the cupboard was bare. The Crown relied solely on testimony that was old and, well, not very credible. For example, alleged victim Lucy D. Couture said she was strangled by Gomeshi, yet the day after the alleged assault, she sent him an email in which she stated, quote, you kicked my ass last night and that makes me want to F your brains out. <laughs> Yikes! Even so, feminists claim the Gomeshi verdict is more evidence that the justice system simply doesn't function properly when it comes to sexual assault. They say that the self-damning testimony from De Couture should have been ignored. Ditto for the self-damning testimony from witness number one, who sent Gomeshi a photo of her posing in a bikini after her alleged assault. <laughs> really? You know, folks, this mindset kind of reminds me of the old SCTV sketch, Court Clerk. Check it out. A new kind of courtroom drama grips the screen. It's Court Clerk, the story of the man who keeps the record straight. Your Honor, there seems to be some discrepancy in Mr. Arnold's testimony. Would the Court Clerk please read back Mr. Arnold's previous testimony? I left my apartment at 9.28, and when I hit the street, I saw four men standing behind a green sedan. Aha! It was four men! Perjury is a very serious offense and could get you a stiff jail term, Mr. Arnold. It's a damn court clerk. Does he have to take down everything I say? I'm afraid I do, Mr. Arnold. It's my job. Yeah, why does that damn stenographer have to write down everything? And yeah, why does that damn Judge Horkins have to read through all those stupid emails? Come on, Judge, damn the torpedoes and the evidence and just find the guy guilty already, okay? Indeed, the feminists seem to be implying that when it comes to sexual assault, there should be a lower benchmark compared to other crimes because of that whole rape culture thing, you know, the idea that every man is a potential rapist and every woman is a potential victim. However, the presumption of innocence is not a favor to the accused or an act of charity by the judge. Rather, innocence until proven guilty is the very bedrock foundation of every Western legal system. And for good reason. It's so we don't wrongly convict innocent people. Now, Justice Horkins produced cogent reasons for his decision. Simply put, he felt these women were not being truthful to him. Hey, maybe those lies were due to forgetfulness or perhaps the alleged victims were experiencing Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Who knows? But under the circumstances, a conviction was impossible. And as the feminist clamor for a different standard of justice for certain crimes they should be very careful what they wish for. Case in point, in some European countries, certain migrants, you can guess who, have been hauled into court, accused of everything from rape to honor killings, but sometimes the sentence is watered down because of cultural sensitivity. You know, the defendant came from a country that was governed by Sharia law, or the defendant wasn't accustomed to seeing women provocatively dressed, i.e. not wearing a burqa, so we'll cut the offender some slack in terms of sentencing based on cultural as opposed to legal reasons. Is this really what the feminists want? 
a sliding scale of justice based on political correctness? Bottom line, the feminists shouldn't be condemning Justice Horkins or the justice system. Namely, they should focus their wrath on the three stooges, or rather, the three alleged victims. Thanks to their behavior and lack of full disclosure, they're ultimately the ones who did all the alleged victims a gross disservice. For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.